All right, so we are talking all things Dallas Cowboys again. Welcome back to Big B Sports Talk. We got our resident Dallas Cowboy fan who also happens to be researcher for Pro Football Focus, Mike McGann. How's it going, Mike? Doing fantastic. Thanks for having me on, Brian. Appreciate the opportunity. No problem, man. So let's just dive head first into this thing. Let's talk the Cowboys season uh, first off. They won 12 games. They were 12-5. and five. It was kind of a roller coaster, though, you know, just kind of up and down. There was a couple of games that maybe they shouldn't have won. Uh, definitely a couple of games that they, you know, they they should have won, um, but didn't. Uh, tell me what you think about the season. Again, we're talking inconsistencies, but this is a tw- still a twelve win football team. Tell me what you think about that. Uh, I think it's a season of the the good and the ugly. Um, to be completely honest, when we were good, we were good. We had right. a great defense. We had a great offense. We were putting up points, um, stopping stopping our opponents. Um, I, I think that up until Thanksgiving, uh, the wheels kind of fell on fell off on our defense. Mm-hmm. Our offense had to uh, compensate, put some more points on the board, relatively more than they probably should have if our defense right. had had come through. But again, yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. It was a roller coaster. I read a stat today um, on social media where it was. Cowboys lost to the Buccaneers one four straight, lost to one another four straight, lost yeah. to one another four straight. <laughs> so, and then we we lose we lose against Washington. So, if the the that continues to unfold, I mean, we'll, we'll be Super Bowl champs champs at the end of the season. <laughs> the thing about the Washington game, man, at the end of the year, it was just like I don't even. They just didn't even care. They didn't act like they even wanted to play. I think they kind of figured that the Eagles were going to win. We're going to be wild card. So it is what it is because they didn't show up at all. Didn't show up at all. I I understand that, but they kept the starters in all the way up until the fourth quarter. So and that's a problem. Right. That, that's a problem. <laughs> so, I mean, if that's your mindset, rest your starters and put Cooper Rush in, put number 34, um, the third string running back in. Right. Put the other receivers in. Don't put your playmakers in harm's way if that's what, if that's your plan of action. Um, I thought as soon as we fumbled the the punt on our first possession, right, right, it just went downhill. I mean, it was it was quicksand from that that point forward. Well, my thing is, and I think that's a, another part of it is Mike McCarthy. How great of a coach he is because. If your plan at the beginning is, okay, we're going to play these guys and we're going to try to win this game. At some point at the as a coach, you have to see, especially when you're in the playoffs, okay, my guys aren't in it. They, they're, they're playing uninspired football. They're not ready to play, which partly is my fault as a head coach, but they're not playing. It's time to get these guys out of the football game and not put up a pathetic performance and just rest everybody. And – I think that's why a lot of Cowboys fans have a problem with McCarthy because as a head coach, you got to be able to understand your team and see that, especially with what's coming on the horizon. Don't you think so? Yes. I mean, my the first thing I posted on Facebook, I saw a, an unorganized and uh, uninspired team. So yeah. it's exactly to your, to your sentiment. Like, if we're not – again, you get the excited – the What's the word I'm looking for? Um, the emotional win over mm-hmm. the Eagles the week before. And then now we go into Washington, which should be, on paper, an easy win. Um, we lose that game horribly. And now right. we're limping into the playoffs against right. the Bucks team that we should beat. But again, now we're 0-7 against Tom Brady. And Tom Brady in the playoffs – I mean, he's going to play his best football regardless of what he did in the regular season. So, again, yes, we should – if our sentiment was to rest our starters in preparation for our wild card, wild card game, then yes, I absolutely agree. Um, but, again, yes, Mike McCarthy, if not, pull him at halftime. I yeah, mean, yeah. If, if they're – we're turning the ball over, we're making we're, – we're not having – we're running the same play twice. One goes for a pick six. All right. right. Uh, yeah, start- that was nuts. <laughs> yeah, get the, get the starters out. 
put our backups in, give, give them some quality reps going into the playoffs in case we need them in the playoffs, and just roll from there instead of keeping everyone in and try to win an uninspired game. Yeah, that that's basically that, that's a great point, Mike. Is just uninspired game. They were playing uninspired football, and you, you left them out there to go get their head beaten in right before the playoffs. It's just like at some point, come on, coach, you, you got to figure out your team and understand your team. So, changing the pace and changing the the conversation a little bit here. This is now. Look, you know me. Yeah, and you know that I don't like the Cowboys, you know, and everybody, it's either a love hate relationship when it comes to the Cowboys, either you love them or you hate them. There is nobody anywhere out there that says, well, yeah, they're okay. Or the Cowboys are my second favorite team. It, it, you don't hear that from anybody. It's either you love the Cowboys and they're great, or I can't stand the Cowboys. For me, it's look, we live here in Dallas. When the Cowboys don't do well, it's a good day for me. And, and no, it's not jealousy. I'm a Steelers fan, so I don't have anything to be jealous of. It's just that's my relationship. Tell me what you think. And, and, and first of all, tell me why you like the Cowboys, how that started, and what you think about the love-hate relationship that everyone, and I mean everyone, seems to have with the Cowboys. Um, so the first part of your question, um, I became a Cowboys fan. I uh, was born in 87, so right when I was coming of age and starting to play the game myself, the Cowboys were, were the team to beat. They gotcha. were winning Super Bowls 90, 92, 93, 95. Um, so I hopped on that bandwagon real quick, being from Southern California. Um, no, never jumped off. Um, gotcha. So that was my my love for the, That's where the love for the Cowboys grew. Um, and then what I think about, I mean – I think people hate the Cowboys because we have the number one fan base in all sports. We're the Forbes top sports franchises for however, for however many consecutive years. The ESPN, the Fox Sports, they have to talk about the Cowboys yeah. to get viewers. Yeah. Um, so that's, I mean, that's probably one of the reasons why everybody hates us because they talk about us all the time, whether we're yeah. winning, whether we're losing. Um, there's always going to be a storyline about the Cowboys in, or, in order to get the eyes on the TV or on the um, web article or, or whatever the case may be. So sure. um, I definitely I definitely see – I mean, I like to say they hate us because they ain't us. But, right, right. Um, <laughs> it's funny because we're, we're still relevant, but we haven't won a Super Bowl since 95. So, it's crazy. Um, it's crazy. But, yeah, so – they could still continue to hate us. They're still going to – all the Eagles fans, all the New York Giants fans, the whole NFL that are fan bases of other teams are going to watch the game on Monday night because they want to see the Cowboys lose. Yeah. And the Cowboys fans are going to watch because obviously we want the Cowboys to win. I mean, I, I, I guess you can say that, but it's Monday night football. I mean, people are going to tune in because it's Monday Night Football. Now, I can't let you get away with that, Mike. Come on. Come on. <laughs> now, granted, people want to see the Cowboys win or lose. I'm not, I'm not taking that away from you. But it's Monday Night Football in the playoffs. I mean, it could be, you know, they could put the Jags, you know, the Jags-Chargers game could have been on Monday Night. Now, granted, TV executives are pretty smart people. They understand it's Tom Brady and it's the Cowboys. So what do you want the biggest number to be? So I get exactly. that part. Um, but yeah, it, it's just weird. And it's funny because living here, you know, in Dallas, I mean, pretty much 30% of the people that live here are transplants. They're not from Dallas, but there are so many cowboy fans, not just here, but everywhere. I just, I, I see what you're talking about as far as the love hate relationship. Um, like I said, it's for me, I like living here. You know, I like being here in the mix and seeing the Cowboys fans get so mad and the suffering. <laughs> to, for me, that's a good time. Now, granted, a, a lot of my friends are Cowboys fans, but at the same time, it's like, you know what? Eh, too bad, so sad, you know? And it's yeah. not, for me, it's not jealousy. I know people say, well, you're jealous. Look, I root for the Steelers. They, I mean, we don't have anything to be jealous of. We're, our fans are everywhere. We win. We're always good. We're always relevant. You know, so, but I get what you're saying for other teams and other places uh, and Cowboys, they are, it is the number one brand 
in America. Uh, I mean, it's the most valued franchise in the world. It's the number one brand in sports. I mean, it's the Cowboys. I mean, it, it's just the Cowboys. And everybody, like I said, you either love them or you hate them. Yep. So, the next, let's venture off and let's talk a little bit of Jerry Jones. My thoughts are, look, I don't mind Jerry because he doesn't run my football team. So, I, I, I don't have any problems with him. I know a lot of Cowboys fans, while they love Jerry and what he's done, they just they want him to get out of the way when it comes to football related activities. Is that he gets in the way? Um, it's it's you know it's out there clearly. I mean, they haven't won since '95. Jerry basically became the GM in '95, and they weren't. They haven't won. Haven't. They've always been relevant. But they haven't made a championship game. They had a, a good run under Parcells, but then he took the reins back from Parcells, and Parcells said, nope, I'm out of here. I go, as soon as you get involved, I'm out. What do you think Jerry Jones' involvement does? Should he stay deep? I mean, he's getting old. He's not getting any younger. I mean, he's not getting any younger. Should Jerry stay, you know, head deep in this thing, or does he just need to totally remove himself and get somebody else in place to try to run this thing? I mean, you can wish on one hand, and then obviously, all right, and have the realistic expectations. Um, as long as Jerry is alive and and the owner, president, and GM of the Dallas Cowboys, he's going to be the face of the Cowboys. Right. Um, in terms of, do I like? I do. I don't like the fact that he's overly involved. Um, right. I don't like that he's the first person interviewed, whether we win or lose. Um, we see a lot of NFL owners, um, for example, a more relevant one would be Robert Kraft. I can't remember the last time I saw Robert Kraft being interviewed, maybe after the Super Bowl, when right. he handed a Lombardi trophy to Tom Brady or Bill Belichick. Right. Uh, but again, um, I think it's he loves his team. I, I definitely can't. Hate it. I can't put myself in his shoes and say I wouldn't do the same thing. Um, but I think a more in these past few years where we've got the 12 wins, I think he's taken more of a, a backseat to, to personnel. One mm -hmm. thing I want to give a ton of credit to is the, the VP of player personnel is Will McClay. Yeah. The way that he's constructed this roster um, and, and made us competitive again. Um, it is phenomenal. Um, he's executed the draft phenomenally for the past few years, if not past decade. Um, and it's just, I think, giving him more control, essentially after w when Jerry passes the torch, per se, making Will McClay the general manager and keeping him there is going to be fantastic for our franchise, uh, making those personnel decisions without the input of Jerry. Uh, but again, Jerry's a great businessman. Um, he had a great business model mm -hmm. he brought the when he bought the Cowboys in 89. Now, obviously, we're the top sports franchise in the world or the most money making sports franchise in the world. I don't know if we're the um, most right. respected, but um, no, I think I like what I, I'm a fan of the Cowboys. I'm a fan of Jerry by default. Um, I sure. think there's th some things that need to be that need to change. Um, in order for us to see success, hopefully, fingers crossed, <laughs> we, we reach that pinnacle moment and hold that Lombardi trophy, but only time will tell. But, gotcha. yeah, I mean, gotcha. um, I, I, I feel bad talking bad about Jerry, but obviously I, I do see the writing on the yeah, wall. Yeah, but it, I don't think it's talking bad about him, though, Mike. I don't think it's talking bad about him. I think it's just being honest about the situation. You know, there's one thing to badmouth somebody and say he's bad because he clearly he is not bad for the Cowboys. He, getting in the way of personnel matter matters is something different versus, you know, him just being a bad spot. Because if Jerry Jones, here's the one thing. If Jerry Jones is not involved with the Cowboys, the Cowboys aren't as as they're not as valuable. Exactly. You know, so you can say whatever you want about Jerry Jones. He's a star. And yes. he is the face of the Dallas Cowboys. The players change, as you know, the old saying goes, the players change, but the game stays the same. This right. is the same thing. The, the players have changed, but Jerry has been the star. Now, is that a good thing football-wise? Not necessarily. 
But I don't think, just pointing that out, I don't think that's bad mouth in Jerry Jones at all, man. And, and I think a lot of Dallas Cowboy fans kind of feel the same way. It's like, look, we want to win. How we get there, we don't care. But the way that <laughs> exactly. you've been doing it forever, it hasn't worked. What is this, 26 years now that we're going yeah. on? It has not worked. We got to do something different. And I think Jerry understands that part of it. But you know what? As you mentioned, he's a good businessman. I'm the star of the franchise. We're going to continue to do it this way until it's proven that we can't be successful at all. Then maybe they'll do something different, you know, which brings me to my, my next point is the playoff chances for this year. Look, I think the Cowboys, and again, this is coming from a Cowboy hater. I can admit it. <laughs> the Cowboys, to me, are the sleeper team in the playoffs. Look, they won 12 football games this year. And yes, it's been up and down, up and down all over the place. But if they stick to the plan that has worked for them, run the football, Dak throw it between 18 and 28 times a game, not out there throwing it 35, 40 times a game, that is not the recipe for the Cowboys. Run the football, run it successfully, and then rush the passer? The Dallas Cowboys can do some damage in these playoffs, man. They, they can do some damage. No, I, and I, I couldn't agree more. Um, that's exactly on my notes in terms of keys to the game. I have run, 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 and play action. Yeah. Um, what I have seen in the past two games is we've kind of heavily dependent on the zone run scheme. Which, wor which works fantastic, and, and this is going back to some injury issues that we've had on the offensive line. Right. During the Washington game, we had a, a hodgepodge of yes. people playing new positions. Yep. Granted, we had three former or current all pros on the offensive line, which should kind of negate not having that cohesiveness. But if you're running inside zone, outside zone, you have to have a cohesive on. You have to know exactly what the guy to your right, what the guy to your left is going to do in order to execute the zone scheme effectively. And I didn't see that against Washington. Nope. Um, with nope. Tyler Biotis coming back, um, the center who started, I think, 14 or 15 of the games, I think that's going to bring some of that back where the zone run scheme is will be more effective. It was not effective at all against Washington. It uh, was not really effective with um, Philadelphia. As soon as you get pressure from anywhere on the defensive line or from blitzing linebackers against the zone, it's ineffective. Right. My my point of the thing is to incorporate a, a power run game. Um, use Zach Martin. He's an all pro. If you're going to keep Tyler Tyler Smith, the, the the first round rookie, in at right or at left guard. Then go ahead and use him. He's fast enough. He's athletic enough to go ahead and pull and make blocks on the um, at the linebacker level. So yes, run, 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 play action, run, and t and you have the emergence of Tony Pollard, first thousand yep. yard season, um, yep. and then I mean he's essentially became a bell horse over the the the, the course of this season, um, and then you have Zeke for short yardage. Let's run power, give it to Zeke. We'll at least get two, two to three yards at least. And he's going to fall forward. Tony Pollard has the speed to get on the outside. So if we want to run outside zone, use Tony Pollard. I mean, even if putting the, both of those guys on the field at the same time, put Tony Pollard Absolutely. out um, on a, at, a, at a wide out position, run a quick um, wide out screen to him. I mean, there's a lot of things you can do with the playmakers that you have. Um, Absolutely. But, I, but uh, yeah, I couldn't agree more. Run the football. Do, be Dak needs to be a game manager, uh, to be completely honest. The amount of interceptions that he's had since he's come back from his uh, injury is, is unacceptable. Yeah. Um, so as soon as we get back to, I mean, if Cooper Rush can win with this team, I'm damn sure no Dak Prescott can win with this team if Absolutely. we run within the, within the confines of what we need to do offensively in terms of running the football especially against Tom Brady, control the football, run the football, control the clock, keep Tom Brady off the field, get the defense tired, and we should come out with a win in this wild card round against the Buccaneers. Well, and you brought up some great points, man. The first one, the offensive line, you got to get them healthy. 
Those guys get back healthy. Yeah. That is the strength of the offense. It just is. One point that you didn't bring up, the emergence, or I, I should say the emergence, the signing of T.Y. Hilton, I think has been incredible. Getting him yeah. out there on the football field, getting a guy inside. Look, we all love Noah Brown. He Noah Brown is, is a great story. You know, he's a late-round pick. T.Y. Hilton is better than him, and he's got to get more yes. targets than him. C.D. Lamb's got to get yes. more targets than him. You know, yes. uh, it just, it, it, to me, they're better. They, they got better at the wide receiver position, a lot better by putting him out there, T.Y. Hilton out there. They, they are so much more explosive, can still move the football. He can get things open inside. Um, they're a better football team with him out there. The one spot that, I don't know, man. I, I have been a Tyron Smith fan since he came into the league. I think that guy is phenomenal, has been phenomenal. They got him out there at right tackle. He hasn't looked good. And people think that you can just plug a guy in that's a first ballot Hall of Famer, which he will be, wherever you put him on the line and he's going to be fine. He looks lost, Mike. It is not the same foot placement, hand placement. It is not the same going from left tackle to right tackle. It's all the opposite stuff. He looks like he's lost. Um, and I hate seeing that because he's been so good for so long. I know his body has pretty much said enough is enough. Um, tell me what you think about that, man, because it, it's sad for me to watch. As an old offensive lineman, it's yeah. sad for me watching it because it doesn't look like that he can do it a anymore. Yes. Um, all the respect for, for Tyron. Um, yes, uh, I mean, I think he's – um, out of position, but I think he's our, yeah. our best option. Um, I yeah. think since Zach Martin plays on the right side, I mean, I, me, if I was an off, the offense line coach, I'd suggest let's put Zach Martin and then put in Connor McGovern or one of our other guards to play right guard where they have a little help because he has experience on the, with his right hand on the ground. Right. Um, but again, you don't move an all pro out of his position. No. So I, no. I, I, I get keeping Zach Martin there. Um, I mean, uh, my biggest issue with, with Mr. Smith is he, he hasn't he hasn't been healthy. He missed no. pretty much all of the, all this season, like you said. Yeah. His body's probably telling him no. His yeah. heart and his mind's telling him I still got it. Right. Um, but I mean, that that's your best option. It's yeah, your best so, option. One steal got have, hurt. You have to put put the best 11 on the field you do you do and you just got to figure it out you're exactly right he's the best option at this point because once steel went down then what do you do it's yeah. like we got to do something and you got this guy that is has been all world for you at some point okay and maybe he figures it out you know again getting more reps and all that kind of stuff maybe he gets it figured out because uh, I do think they can run the football against Tampa Bay this weekend. I think they can run the football and control the clock. On the defensive side of the ball, I know stopping the run has been a Cowboys issue. And the first matchup, the Buccaneers just ran all over the Cowboys. Having said that, the Buccaneers can't run the football anymore. They're, you talk about a beat-up offensive line. 